So, you're from LA? Yeah, I mean, no. I guess, yes, but not really. How are you liking the city? It's been cool. I'm still afraid to use these trolleys. <laughs> Why? Some of them don't have doors. I mean, <laughs> I could go rolling down one of these steep ass hills. You're lucky you're cute. That's stupid. I, uh, I'll take stupid and cute. But my line if we ain't talking about no bands. Ten toes down, I'm really flexing in my van. Welcome back, everyone, and thanks for joining us for another Wind Down. Yay. Today, we have with us our exceptional costume designer, Shiona Torini, without whom our characters would be very unstylish and also very, very naked. So, are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Cheers. 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 <laughs> well, you guys, let's talk about episode two, the reason we're here, growth, okay? And in this episode, we finally jump in time a year where we see Issa and Molly are single, but they're thriving and they're as close as ever. They're doing great in their careers and they're concentrating on themselves. And we even see Molly has cut her hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what it means when a black woman cuts her hair? What does it, it mean? Means, it means business. It means transformation. I cut my hair and my life changed. What was it like dealing with this new <laughs> hairless Molly? <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting because I think with black women, our hair impacts our clothing so much. And Molly is going through some things. She's changing, she's growing up. Yeah. Her hair is reflecting that and the clothes had to reflect that a little bit as well. She's still kind of the same Molly. She's still put together. She's still very elevated and she's still chic, but it's like, Maybe she's like not putting as much effort into letting her clothes do the talking. Yeah, I think that's even reflected in the colors that she chose to have her. She was more in muted colors this season, whereas last season she was at her new law firm. She was a bit more bright. Yeah. Last season, she was coming in hot every time she was on, <laughs> every time she was on camera. And I wanted to soften her a little bit. I mean, you still see it. It still peeks through. I think one of the themes I experiment a lot with on Insecure that I haven't seen so much on television are Black women who have spending power. Mm. And I want to make sure that that's reflective, especially in someone like Molly, who like really can buy anything she wants. Molly She's, be spending. Yeah. yeah. So this season, we see Issa and her company growing and taking on exciting projects, like working with Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, do you guys think Issa was selling out in a way to appease MBW? Selling out is such a strong word, it and is. I feel like Crenshaw, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> I think, you know, Issa is in a new position where she's trying to appease a brand. Yeah who's funding the event, and that brand allows her to work with up-and-coming artists. And they had notes. And yeah. Crenshaw, you know, didn't want any notes. But I don't think that's selling out. Selling out uh, sounds very different to me. It means, like, compromising your values and kind of giving up on your, your right. vision. Um, so I side with Issa on this one. So there is a whole yes. gorgeous fashion Incredible. show this episode. Can you talk about all that went into building this show? Of course, when I read the script, I was like, oh, we obviously have to custom an entire show. I have since learned that that probably mm -hmm. did not have to happen. I could have just styled pieces to make it look like an original show. But I thought it would be interesting to collaborate with an actual designer who kind of blends streetwear and high fashion because that spoke to the Quinchon script. Street, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we collaborated with Pierre Moss and Kirby. Um, we did everything from the casting, the fittings, the construction of the clothing, mm -hmm. and really created an entire fashion show. And that was really special. I don't know if I yeah. would ever have the opportunity to do something like that again in my career, while also simultaneously helping with all of the other elements of the fashion show, yeah. the bikers and, you know, the drummers, and making sure that they felt authentic to L.A. I remember walking onto set as Issa D and as myself and being mad at Issa D for crushing Crenshaw's vision. That's how incredible <laughs> the fashion show was and just to watch it play out. And even in the edit, wanting to see yeah. every piece of it, wanting the yeah. audience to see every piece. I was so proud of Crenshaw slash you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna give you credit <laughs> for putting this in the together. So Crenshaw really did that all by himself <laughs> and it was, it was really impressive. I felt the fashion show was a way to see 
to give the episode scope and performance in a way that I don't think we have in our own community in the same way that felt big. You know what I mean? And so when the like the lights go dark and the drummers come out and the low rider bikes come out, it just was really amazing. So you really did do like an amazing job with that. This is enough compliments though. I was just about to say, wow. Thank you, Shiana, so much for joining us on this special wind down. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you, you for, for having giving me. Crenshaw life. Uh, everybody, this is the real Crenshaw right here. <laughs> Crenshaw from Bermuda. <laughs> next week. Thank you all so much for drinking with us and hashing it all out. And we look forward to next week. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>